Hello and welcome back to another day of Advent of Code. We're here for day 18, which is, oh boy, <laughs> a lot of reading and a, a fairly complicated solve. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the code of my solution as well as my explanation of the problem. Um, and hopefully that will clear up any confusion because I got, I got pretty confused on this problem. All right, so the input of our uh, data today is a list of snail numbers. Oh, I'm also going to show you some real cool tricks that <laughs> make some of the latter parts a lot easier. Um, and the snail numbers, what they look like is something like these numbers here. And so your input is going to be a series of lines and they're going to have some level of nested listing and we're going to be performing some operations on those. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to be eventually adding all these together. So we have to first understand what an addition operation is. And an additional op addition operation in snail numbers is making them into a bigger sublist. So you would take this sublist and this sublist and make them one list. And because of the way the addition works, it's not commutative. So you have to do them in a particular order. You start by combining these two and you get one number. Then you combine these two, you get one number. Then you combine these two, et cetera, et cetera. And by one number, I mean one list of numbers. Um, then once you've combined them down to just one number, one number list at the end, you compute what's called the magnitude. And the magnitude is you take each value in a list. If it's just a number, it's the number. Otherwise, it's three times x plus two times y, and that applies recursively. And we'll get to this in a second. The tricky part and the part where the problem is way more complicated is the reducing algorithm. So this snail math has this, this concept where uh, if a number is too nested, it turns into, or it explodes out into the adjacent numbers. Um, and if a number is too big, that number gets split. And so these are kind of the split operations. And the way these work, and this is actually a little bit tricky, is you apply explode at a higher precedence than you apply split. And um, once you've applied an explode, then you start over and you keep doing these operations until no more of those operations remain. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like when we look at the code. Uh, and most of this is just, you know, wrapping your head around this and making that work. I decided, <laughs> I decided to solve my problem using regular expressions and a little bit of math. And so I'm going to sh show you some cool features of the Python regex library uh, for doing this. So let's first start with the sum and I'll show you kind of my high level functions and how I use them to solve this problem. And then we'll, uh, we'll go through everything at the end. So first I just split the number by lines uh, really simply. Um, I call reduce number here. Uh, I guess that's fine. Uh, I basically use reduce number wherever in the problem that I need it. Uh, I think this is okay. I actually call it again down here and again down here, which is maybe a little bit overkill. Um, I think I can get away with not calling it here and that would make this problem or make my solution a little bit faster. But anyway, I parse all the lines. I call this reduce number, which is going to implement this algorithm and we'll show that later. Uh, I also call this add number, which is going to implement this algorithm here. Uh, and then finally I call compute sum, which is gonna implement this bit here. Uh, let's start with compute sum since I think it's kind of the easiest one to explain. Uh, so we'll have an input as a string. I abuse the AST here by using literal eval. And I know everyone's like, oh, eval is evil. Uh, but fortunately in this case, we're using literal eval, which is completely safe to use because it only allows literals, you know, lists, tuples, integers, dictionaries, true, false, strings, etc. cetera. Uh, and so this, is, this makes our list parsing at the end really, really easy. Uh, Python will just take this directly, uh, literal eval of, I don't know, one, instant, one, two. Uh, and it'll just build this list object for us. So we don't have to do any sort of parsing. We don't have to build a JSON parser or anything. We can just use this function uh, to make this easier. Okay, so our sum first uh, parses that value to Python objects, then we have lists and integers at that point, and then it calls this compute val, which I've implemented recursively. And this compute val is fairly straightforward. If it's an integer, 
we just return that integer back. Otherwise, we assert that it's always length two, and that will always be true after we have done this algorithm here. Um, so, you know, we can't we can't compute the sum before that, but after that, it'll always be length two. And we just do three times a recursive call here and a recursive call here. And our termination condition is that it's an integer. And so this recursion helps us out here. Now notice that I use pipe any for the type here. Uh, Python doesn't have the proper recursive type system to represent what I would want here, because uh, this could be any sort of nesting of list. I guess it is bounded, because if it was greater than four, then we would have reduced it up here. So perhaps I could have typed this with a really crazy union, but I decided against it. Uh, any, <laughs> any will be good enough. Okay, uh, let's talk about the add function next, since that one is the simplest. It is just taking, I, I use strings as my intermediate, and we'll get to these regexes in a second, uh, but add is really simple here. And then we get to reduce. Reduce is fairly complicated. So I've kind of split it up into three parts, or two parts here. One is the explode part, the other is the split part, uh, and I'll show you how that processing works. So the first thing that I have to do here is I need to find the pair that is at least depth of four. So I have a simple regex here, well, simple. <laughs> I have regex here to match our pair. Note that I've captured the first number and captured the second number. Um, this is actually not that complicated of a regex. I did a regex tutorial. I'll link that in the description in case it helps you out there. Um, but yeah, this, this regex, I think it's not that complicated. All right, next what I do is I count, I, I get the string to the left of the, of the matched pair. So if we look at uh, this number, for instance, <clears throat> Let me paste this in here. Let's say that we found this pair here. We matched it there. Uh, we're going to find the string to the left, and we're going to count the number of opening brackets and the number of closing brackets, and that will tell us the depth that this is at. <clears throat> and so, you know, even if you had, let's say we found this pair. We have two closing brackets and four closing brackets so that we know, uh, well, three, close, three, <clears throat> three opening brackets, so we know we're at a depth of three. So that's how you can compute this there. Out of water, dang it. <laughs> um, and we know if it's greater than or equal to four, then we need to do our explode operation. Now, the way I implemented the explode operation is pretty tricky here. I used two regular expressions to match the number to the left and the number to the right. Matching the number to the right is actually very easy. We can just use any sort of number regex to match that, uh, as long as we start our string at the end of our pair match onwards. Uh, and if there's nothing to replace, it won't do anything. And I'm using the callback form of re.sub. This allows me to do dynamic replacements based on the string that's inside of it. And so I can do, you know, a little bit of math here to add the right number in the pair. Now, the left regex is a little bit more complicated. It starts looking the same as this. Uh, we're just matching some number. But we also have this negative look ahead. And what this negative look ahead is saying is, find a number that does not have a number after it. So it's a little bit complicated, uh, but this, you know, it exactly represented what I wanted in my problem. So it finds, you know, based on this pair here, it will start by trying to match this, but then nope, there's a number after it, so it can't match that. And then it tries to match this, uh, but nope, there's a number after that, so it can't match that. Uh, finally, it matches this number, and there's no, there's no number after that before this pair. So that's how that, left regex works here. Uh, but then I just do a substitution with count one. So I just replace out the number, you know, do a little, a little bit of math inside of our callbacks. And uh, then we replace the actual pair with zero. And again, we sliced before and after to get rid of the actual pair. And then I do this like weird trick to continue outer. This is just because I couldn't think of a smart way to uh, restart this loop up here so we have a, a little state variable to manage that it isn't the worst um but maybe someone else came with a better idea all right so that's our explode algorithm the next is the split algorithm i also used regular expressions for this um and the split algorithm is if we see a number that's greater than or equal to 10 fortunately we can match a number that is greater than or equal to 10 because it will be a two-digit number or more 
And so this regular expression will match that. And we use a similar callback here to split that number up. And again, it's floor of the left number and ceiling of the right number. And each time that we uh, found some sort of replacement to do, we continue this loop, jump it back up to the top, and keep restarting it. Uh, but if neither of these matched, we can return early, and we know we've completely reduced our string. So that's how that's how my part one works. And part one is just compute all those. So jam these all together, figure out the number, get the answer. Um, I put together some of there, there were a lot of test cases in this problem, which was good. Uh, I just put those all in here and made sure that those worked out correctly. Uh, but there's some of those inputs. Part two. Uh, Assuming you implemented this and actually got the numbers out, part two is actually much easier once you have that working. Um, so ignore all this math, that's not the interesting part. Part two says, given any two lines, uh, sum those together and what is the largest sum? And so this is really just compare every line against every other line. And I used enumerate to helpfully figure out those. I actually don't need enumerate here. Well then, that actually makes this a little bit simpler. Yes, indeed. Cool. Uh, and basically, I, I'm just computing the maximum value here. There's probably a smarter way which maximizes the uh, the sums in a different way. But I just computed every single sum and got whatever the biggest one was and uh, figured out the answer that way. But yeah, that's day 18. A lot of reading, a lot of mental gymnastics. Um, but I, you know, once once you've got it working, it's not not too bad. <laughs> My solution, of course, is, is hacky regexes, but that's, that's just how I roll. Anyway, I'll see you for the next one.